This video is provided for general information only. Always consult your local attorneys for your unique situation. Happy Friday! I remember when I was in law school, I was sitting in a, uh, a federal taxation class and I was uh, reading one case. Um, obviously, it's a uh, uh, IRS suing one taxpayer for not paying taxes or making deduction that IRS thought it was uh, uh, improper, okay? Um, the court made a comment. The reason I remember so clearly uh, was that the court made a comment saying paying taxes, you know, doesn't mean you are being patriotic, okay? And I think there's some truth to it. Also, there's another case. Um, when I was uh, uh, working in a bankruptcy boutique firm, and I remember I was reading this case, uh, it was trustee's attempt to set aside a transfer of the debtor that was made uh, prior to filing the bankruptcy. Well, the end result was that the, the court um, ruled that the debtor simply had a good bankruptcy planning. And there's nothing wrong with good bankruptcy planning. Okay, And that's where I want to lead to today's discussion is when it's okay to transfer your asset and to keep it from the reach of the creditor. Okay. Good planning is the key. Now, if you transfer the asset or you do some sort of plan to avoid the reach of the creditor, when you know there's a claim or potential claim and when you know there's a lawsuit, that is probably too late, okay? And that particular area of law is called fraudulent transfer. Um, and it is very common. Let's face it, when, you, when you're in a lawsuit, you panic, you're nervous, you don't know if it's going to win or not. You play, in your mind, you play this worst case scenario. So you tuck your asset away. I mean, that, that's, that's a general occurrence or in a general mindset of what uh, people have and I understand that. Um, so, the, so the key is do it uh, before there's a potential claim or do it before there's a lawsuit or potential claim. Okay, And again, always consult with your local attorney. Uh, make sure you do it properly. Now in California, there's five elements to the fraudulent transfer. And I think it's worth to talk about it. Um, to, for the creditor to successfully sue you, uh, for fraudulent transfer, the creditor has to prove the following five elements. Okay, that um, that creditor has a right to the payment uh, from the debtor, and the debtor somehow. The second one is the debtor transfer the property or incur an obligation to a third party. Okay, the third one is key that the debtor. Uh, transfer the property or incur the obligation with the intent to hinder, delay, or defraud the creditor. This element is a uh, third element is a key uh, because this is where um, the issue that is most litigated. I mean, let's face it. You know, if you if a, a creditor has a judgment, you know he satisfy element one. If the property is being transferred, it's automatically satisfied element two um, and as a result you know element four creditor has suffered harm obviously if you transfer property from the reach of the creditor the creditor is harmed and that is action meaning transfer or incur the debt to prevent the creditor from uh, enforcing the judgment and that's very obvious uh, fifth element will be met as well so this you know, when, during the fraudulent transfer, the element number three is the one that is most litigated or most focused on. And the reason I want to uh, talk about, highlight that, is because um, in California, there's a split decision uh, among different district court appeals. Okay. For, uh, for the fourth district court appeal, which, you know, San Diego, Riverside, San Bernardino, Orange County, um, 
is preponderance of evidence. So it's fairly low. Sixth District Court of Appeal, which is in San Jose area, there's a ruling say, you know, the intent, the plaintiff has to demonstrate the intent or proof of intent with clear and convincing evidence. Now, these are the four burden of proof in California. Probable cause is just, is the lowest one where, you know, this is where the police arrest individual where they have a reasonable belief that something happened. Then, you know, that's enough for them to make arrest. Beyond a reasonable doubt is a criminal uh, burden of proof. Um, it's a very, very high standard. Uh, and, you know, in the middle two ground is preponderant of evidence and clear and convincing. Okay, yeah. so this is the definition. Okay, preponderance is based on more convincing evidence and its probable truth or accuracy and not the amount of evidence. So it's fairly, uh, fairly low standard. Uh, clear and convincing evidence on the other hand. Um, the party must present evidence that leaves you a firm belief or conviction that is highly probable that the factual contentions of the claim or defense are true. So obviously that is um, higher, um, I would say much higher than uh, preponderance of evidence. So um, the court doesn't like attorneys to use a percentage to quantify uh, these burdens of proof, but you know, these are the four available in California, and these are based on scale, from the lowest to the highest. So, let your imagination go uh, run. So that's, uh, you know, another question that you might have is, what happened to the third party uh, who purchased the property or, or uh, you know, lend the money to the debtor and took the property as a collateral? What happened to them? Are they gonna subject to uh, this fraudulent transfer litigation uh, that creditor might be filing. Now, let's talk about a real life uh, case. Um, this this one is uh, the opinion was published April twenty first, two thousand seventeen, and he talked about all angles. Okay, um, and and the story was that um, you know the plaintiff, not to this Inc, filed a lawsuit against uh, defendant Yang. Okay. Defendant Yen did not respond to a lawsuit, so the plaintiff received a default judgment. And then after that, they proceed to uh, obtain an abstract of judgment and file it with county recorder's office. And this is pretty much uh, the judgment name. Okay, this is put uh, the judgment creditor into a secure status uh, of the property on the real estate. Okay, during this time, uh, during the time from abstract of judgment uh, being recorded, okay, uh, the property was transferred from defendant to his dad. Then the dad took out a reverse mortgage from Urban Financial Group using the property as a collateral. Yeah, that's the first lawsuit. Second lawsuit, after Nicholas uh, found out such a transfer, Nicholas uh, filed a second lawsuit against Ying, dad, his dad, and the Urban Financial Group for fraudulent transfer. Okay. Well, the result is. Obviously, the Urban Financial Group assert a defense called um, assert a good faith defense, meaning when I lend the dad the money and took the property as collateral, we had no clue what was going on. So they litigated this matter. And um, Urban Financial won. And pretty much in that case, um, you know, the the Urban Financial Group demonstrated that at the time of lending, they have um, you know, they secured a title insurance and they investigated 
the title and it was all clear it did not show up and in fact the title company also admitted fault in this case um, you know they they pretty much say yeah we screwed up we, we investigated but it just we just didn't see it. the abstract judgment recorded by uh, Nautilus okay so because of that uh, the court said you know not uh, the urban financial wasn't liable uh, to the plaintiff for fraudulent transfer because they are a bona fide uh, third party okay so the result is obviously Nautilus won and got the judgment against the Yang and the dad for a fraudulent transfer uh, obviously Yen is already on the hook for the first lawsuit now the dad is also liable uh, for the fraudulent transfer even though that wasn't a party in the first lawsuit you know, once you have a judgment it's hard to convince the court or the jury um, that um, the transfer wasn't to wasn't to prevent uh, from reach uh, on creditors enforcement or judgment it's really hard and if you are assisting uh, that person to make the transfer you are potentially liable as well that's where the dad got hooked on got hooked okay and if you are a bona fide third party um, like urban financial group you have no clue what's going on between the yin and the dad um, obviously um, the, the law is not the court is not gonna uh, make you liable for the fraudulent transfer so that's a lesson for today and thank you for watching Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button above. Please also check out our other videos.